Hey, welcome back to our last day of 30 and 30 with Nikki. Um, today's topic is journey. Where is, what's your journey? What path is God leading you on? Today's Bible verse is Proverbs 22 and 4. Humility is the fear of the Lord. It wages, its wages are riches and honor and life. So, it took me 29 years walking on this journey trying to figure out what I was supposed to do. When the whole time God had been trying to tell me my purpose, but I wasn't listening or I felt like I wasn't ready to do it or I was scared to do it. So instead of doing what he told me to do, I did what I wanted to do, which made my journey so much harder than what it had to be. I feel like if I would have listened to God back in, what was it, 2011, and went into the Navy like I was supposed to, well, he was really trying to get me to go to the Army, but... Look, I was saying no then. I was like, no. I don't want to go to no army. I don't want to go to no army. Like, ugh, I'm going to be out there, you know. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. But I was like, I'd rather go to the Navy. <laughs> if I got to go to any military. I really wanted to go to the Air Force. But they wouldn't let me go because of this tattoo on my neck. It really pissed me off. Because it said it can't be on the neck. It's not on my neck it's more like around my neck <laughs> like i was like a t-shirt would cover that up you know what i'm saying but they wouldn't let me in so i actually got into the navy but you know they'd be like six months before you can leave and i am super impatient like I'm like, bruh, I need money now. <laughs> I can't be sitting around here for six months waiting to leave. So I ended up getting a job at Gladys Nice Chicken and Waffles. Um, as a waitress. Like, I worked at the Union City location. And then... The head boss man felt like I was good enough to go to the downtown location, which they sent me. And at the time, I didn't have a car, so I had to ride the bus and the train down there. But after two weeks of working downtown, I saved up and got me a car. Because I was like, I cannot be riding the bus down here in the dark and stuff like that. I didn't feel safe, so I got me a car. Got the car. And that's when I end up going to Ohio. And, like, my crazy journey started then. But it's like, what if I would have listened to God and went into the military, the Navy, or the Army? I would have been better off now. I would have had a house. I could have went to school for free. I would have had good health insurance my daughter would have had good health insurance you know what i'm saying i probably would have even been married now <laughs> probably most likely because i believe i met my soulmate already but i think because i didn't follow the path god Intended for me to go. I tried to do stuff my own way. I took too long getting to him. And he got real damaged. When we 
when you get real damaged, you don't want to try no more. You give up on everything. So, I don't know. It's kind of hard to have known your soulmate and then try to date after that. It's like knowing you ain't going to never, you might like some people, find some people attractive, but you'll never have that same connection because that person was your soulmate. <laughs> so, you know, I can't change the path, past, and I can't force anybody to want to heal. So, all I can do is move forward and try my best to do what God tells me to do moving forward so that I won't mess my path up even more than I already have. I'm sorry you guys. I do not allow animals to lick me in the face and she just licked me in the face. <laughs> it just it just threw me for a loop for a little bit. But yeah. What are you missing out on your journey, on your path, because you keep saying no to God? Following God is scary, but following the devil is even scarier. Why is it so easy for us to follow sin than it is to follow God? We all know how things are going to end when it comes to sin. Is it is it the fact that you don't know how things are going to end when following God that makes it scary? Because it's like... It's kind of like with me and in in working... Like, I kept talking about how I want to be an entrepreneur, but I was too scared to take the chance. Because you don't know how it's going to end. It could end good, it could end bad, but you don't know until you do it. But I was thinking in my head, like, I have a daughter. Can I really be trying to take this chance of being an entrepreneur? With having a daughter, what if I lose everything? And then, you know, I don't know. People are always, always trying to break up a black family home. When I was in the shelter, I seen so many non-black women in the shelter with their kids. But it just seemed like let it be black women if somebody claimed to care. Ow, you scratching me. Why don't you be still? If they claim to care, they be trying to take your kid away from you. And for some people, that's all they got. Like, as far as hope, it's their kids. Like... That's the only thing they have getting them, you know, giving them the strength to wake up every morning to try to do better is their kid. And when you take all that, that from them, they hope they have nothing left. Then they no longer want to, they have no purpose. But... After sitting here for two months, hurt, and God was like, if you trust me, I'll take care of you, and he been taking care of me. So it's like, 
why not take a chance on myself? I've been out here making all these other people rich. Working hard for these other people. For them to cut my insurance off <laughs> while I'm hurt. You know what I'm saying? Then I can't finish getting my getting seen by doctors and making sure I heal right, you know what I'm saying, or firing you because things are slow, I don't know, and they letting people go, but they're not letting pe the people go that that's not productive, <laughs> they letting the productive people go. You ever notice that in the job? Ah! Ah! Malia, 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 Malia. Malia. But you you notice like they always ah oh, it's not plugged in. Malia, <laughs> plug that into the the white thing because my camera about to die. Yeah, the white cord. Plug it into that little white thing. This? Yeah. This side? Yes, baby. This? Yes, baby. Thank you, ma'am. But I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> but it just seemed like the people that do the least amount of work be at a job for years. And the ones that be in there working, they be the ones to get fire quick the first ones to go and one of the last jobs that I worked in in Georgia this lady said to me it was a sewing job I was sewing socks let her out she want to get out I was sewing socks and she said people don't like it when you come in here and be trying to show folks up and I'm thinking in my head Folks in here really thinking I'm trying to show somebody up. <laughs> and I'm just working. I'm just trying to make sure I secure a spot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can continue to make money to take care of my child. But folks in here thinking I'm trying to make myself look better than them or something. You know, I don't know. But that's how people think. And it's like... I have all the jobs that I have gotten fired from. It's not because I wasn't working. It's because somebody that was jealous of my work ethic got me fired. And it's like, how could somebody do that to somebody? You don't know what I'm going through. And you're going to get me fired because you're jealous. Or insecure and whatever. But it's people like, like that out there. Just just like it's people that's going to, whatever your path is, they're going to try to push you off your path. Or distract you from your path. Because you're walking it a little better than the way they walk in their path. Because you're listening that's why God gave you two ears <laughs> and one mouth so you can listen more than you talk but some people just talk 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 that they can't hear me I'm not much of a talker so I'm always listening I feel like some people get some people was a little jealous when I said, when I tell people what God say, you know, you can tell when somebody feeling something. It'd be like all over their face. It, the look on their face was like, why is God talking to you and not me? Maybe you're not listening. There's a lot of people out here not listening. Or if they do hear him, they saying no. God telling you to leave where you comfortable at. Explore. 
and you say no i want to stay here well he tried to get you to the next point but you said no but me i stopped saying no so i'm just i'm just climbing and climbing and getting to the next point to the next point and they like why she getting all the way up there and i'm not because i'm not saying no i have learned to stop saying no to god like i'm tired of doing stuff the hard way i'm tired of starting over i'm tired of like when you try to walk your path without god it's like taking the long way home you could just go straight it's like you could go straight through this this little right here and get straight to your house in like five minutes but because you said no now you gotta take this detour over here and then when you get to the end of that detour is another detour and it end up taking you 20 minutes to get home where well, you could have listened to the guy and got home in five minutes that's what it's like trying to walk a path without god you keep running to all these detours they keep pushing you back and setting you back from where he's trying to get you to the point. But that's the plan. That's the plan that God and sin, I'm not God, I'm sorry. The devil and sin has for you to keep holding you back to the point you give up. And then... You know, it's just an endless cycle of going around breaking people, breaking their spirits, breaking their mind. The devil is jealous of you. She's jealous because she feel like God loves you more than her. Don't put that under there. Because then you're going to be looking for it. Stop letting people block your path. I know it hurts to let go of people that you love. People that you want to hold on to so bad. But I don't know if I ever told anybody this, but God showed me my hell. And from then on, that's when I got real serious. And the crazy thing is, I wasn't going to go to hell because I was a bad person. You know why I was going to go to hell? Because I was following and listening to other people and not listening to him. In the dream, it was like I was hanging out with some girl. And she was like, let's go to this party. Anybody that knows me, <laughs> I don't, I'm not the partying type. So in the dream, I was already in my head like, uh, I really don't want to go. Like, that's not me. That's not my scene. I'm not a partier. But I went anyway. You know where this party was? <laughs> it was hell. When I said they was doing everything, it was like the whole party was like on fire, but they was doing everything in that fi in that party. Like the fire wasn't even phasing them. That's I don't know. Some people that they might be like that sound lit, <laughs> but to me it it terrified me. To, 
to know that I was going to go to hell just because I'm listening to other people and not listening to what God is trying to tell me. And I was like, we got to get out of here. This is not no party. She was like, no, nah, I want to stay. I was like, okay, well, you stay. I'm going to get up out of here. It felt as quick, as easy as it was to get into that party. It felt like it took me days, maybe years, <laughs> to get out of that building. I was just, it was like a maze trying to get out. By some miracle, I was able to get out. And it was thousands of cars outside that building. So what'd that say? We need to get it together. We gotta start listening. You gonna be at that party that you can't escape from. But it was so many cars. And you know, none of them will start. None. Thousands of cars and none of them would start. <laughs> I was like, how these people get here if none of these cars are going to start? You know what I'm saying? But, but by some miracle, again, I found the car that would start. And then I was driving and the devil kept popping up in my face. Like, in front of the car as, as I was driving. Like, you would never be able to escape me. I think... If I wasn't the type of person that was like, love proving people wrong, <laughs> I would have been like, what's the point? I might as well give up now, right? If I'm never going to escape him, I might as well give up right now. There's some people that think like that. If I'm never going to get out of this hell, I might as well give up and just learn to cope with the hell, right? But me, I love proving people wrong, so I'm like, oh... What was his name? Ty, the the gospel singer. Like, what's that? How that song go? When he be like, he thought. Now I can't even think how the song go. <laughs> ah, how that song go? He thought he had me, but God did it, or something like that. Oh, God turned it. Yeah, that's what it is. God turned it. Yeah. I love that song. <laughs> that, that hit hard, with that, especially that part when he said he thought he had me, but God turned it. I was like, woo. I was sentencing myself to life in hell and didn't even know it. Thought I was being a good person, you know, just by doing nice things for people. But what's the point of doing nice things for people if you not go listen to God? Doing nice things is not going to just get you into heaven. You got to listen to him too. Because you might be doing the nice things for a demon. <laughs> You never know. You're doing these nice things and you're feeling drained. You're feeling unappreciative, like appreciated or whatever, you know. You know what I'm trying to say. Because you're doing it for the wrong person. You're doing it for a demon. You're not doing it for somebody deserving of it. And that's what God, that's why you got to listen to God so he can guide you to the ones that are ready, ready for your help. 
Because if you take matters into your own hands, you go help the wrong people, they're going to drain you. And then you're going to be broken, just like they're broken. And then your heart is going to turn cold. And you ain't going to want to... You're going to become mean and bitter. I always wonder how celebrities and wealthy people chose, you know, who they help. And as I continue on this journey, you realize, you realize, <laughs> you know, how you supposed to help people and who to help. You learn because you learn from yourself. God only helped those who help themselves. So, if you asking God to help you start a business, but you haven't done anything to start that business, he not going to do anything either. But once you take that first step, he's going to help you. For a long time, I was just like, God, I'm not ready yet. Like, you want me to start this business? I, I don't, I haven't even been to, I've never been to school to sew. I learned from watching YouTube. But he said, you good enough to start. I was like, yeah. But as I kept taking steps, he kept providing tools and people to be there to help me keep moving forward. Like this jacket. I designed it and I sold it together. But he led me to this lady named is Kike. She is a Nigerian lady who lives in Decatur, Georgia. Well, Stone Mountain, Georgia. With her five daughters. Yes, five daughters. <laughs> I've never been big on having a lot of kids, but to each his own. <laughs> um, she is a very nice lady. A very spiritual lady. She helped me cut it, cut it out, because I'm not, I don't, I'm not that good at pattern making. Like I can draw the stuff up all day, but the tailoring and pattern making, I feel like those are like my weakness right now, and that's why I do want to go to school. So. Those two can no longer be a weakness. But I'm still on this other, I'm, I'm in school right now getting this, my bachelor's. So I got one year left in that. So who knows? I've also learned if you just keep doing stuff enough you'll figure out a way to perfect it so I've been pushing myself to sew more and more so that it'll get certain things to get easier for me to do I got so many compliments on this jacket today you guys I, it got me so hyped so hyped like I was like I need to <laughs> I need to make more stuff for myself and wear it cuz I'm always making stuff for Malia and they and people are always complimenting her on the stuff that I make for her. So I'm like I need to make some more stuff for myself cuz you know even the the Caucasian people they was in love with my jacket today. I actually got more compliments from them than <laughs> than my own race but 
I, w I didn't expect that from them. So my journey is right for right now is fashion. Build this company. Stop procrastinating. Stop being lazy. And build this company. I feel like it's life. It's like a life or death situation for real. To me, that's how I have to look at it to take it seriously. To put a fire up under my own booty. It's life or death. I'm tired of being sad, being miserable, just living to die. I want to, I want to actually live life. And it's like you can't live life until you get past that financial barrier. Once you get past that, it's like the doors and the opportunities just open up. And you get to see stuff you never saw before. You never thought you would see in your lifetime. That's where I want to be at. I want to travel. I want to see things that I never thought I would ever see. See countries that I never thought I would be in. That I thought I would only, you know, experience through TV. I want to give my child a forever home. Not just moving from apartment to apartment. I want to have a home that's ours for however long we want to stay there. If forever, then forever. I want to do things different. So now I'm walking this path with God instead of trying to do it alone on my own. Only you can decide how your path will go. Where you have nothing is easy, but would you have a more, would you rather walk, you know, it's like a video game. Would you try to, would you rather go through the video game without the cheat codes? And it might take you months and years to finish it. Or would you rather have the cheat codes and you can go ahead and get through it. And then after you get through the story mode, you can just enjoy the game. We get stuck on the story mode that we don't get to enjoy the game. Don't get stuck on the story mode. Get the cheat codes. Get God. I don't really believe in religion. Religion is man-made. I'm more spiritual. But whatever, I hope, I, you know, whoever your God is, Ask them to open your mind and your heart to help on this path. It'll uh, make the path so much better. Make it a lot more interesting. i tell you that. <laughs> well, thank y'all for doing these 30 days with me. I really, really appreciate it. 
You've helped me grow so much in these 30 days. You just don't know. Just on my communication skills alone. For real. For real, for real. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. It was great getting to know some new people. Talking to some people. Listening to... What, what they had on their mind. It was just great to hear that. Change some perspectives. Learn some new things. Well, it's been real. I'll see y'all back here on Saturday the 26th. I will be doing my weigh-in for my fasting. So... Bye-bye for now. See y'all Saturday. Peace.